Hi folks, uh, so this is a video on uh, differentiation of sine and cosine x um, from first principles. So differentiating sine and cosine is actually something that you met quite a long time ago and you will already know that the derivative of sine x is cosine x and the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. But we ever, never actually looked at um, how we prove that uh, those derivatives from first principles. Um, and the reason we didn't do it earlier on is because to, to follow the proof, uh, you need some, uh, some more recent uh, education, basically. Uh, so trig compound angle formulae, you need to understand or know those um, to follow this proof, and, and also the, the small angle approximations. Uh, and you'll see how they come in. But let's just recap those things first of all. So sine of a plus b and cosine of a plus b, uh, you might have learnt them off by heart. If not, you know where to get them in the formula booklet. So hopefully you're happy that sine of a plus b is sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. Uh, and the cosine of a plus b is cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. Um, and then I mentioned that we also need the <clears throat> small angle approximations. So in uh, a recent video, you've been shown that sine of theta is always uh, approximately equal to theta. This is for small angles of theta. Uh, and also when theta is small, cosine theta is approximately one minus theta squared over two. And we're actually just going to use these last two results here uh, to come up with a couple of other things. So here I've got my small angle approximations uh, and we want to decide what uh, sine h over h is uh, as we limit h to zero. So you'll have seen this notation before and um, we're saying as h gets closer and closer to zero, what happens to this function? Um, well, hopefully you're happy that if h approaches zero, if this h here is very, very small, then we've got a small angle. <clears throat> and so sine theta is approximately equal to theta for small angles theta. So if h is small, then sine h is going to equal h, and we get our fraction h over h, and that is clearly equal to 1. So we can say the limit, whereas h tends to 0, of sine h over h is 1. OK, and similarly for this one, if h is tending towards zero, so this is a small angle, then we can replace our cos theta with one minus theta squared over two, or in this case, cosine h with one minus h squared over two. All right, we've still got the minus one from here over h. Uh, and then we can simplify that. We've got a, a one here and a minus one there. Uh, and we can simplify the fraction a bit. And hopefully uh, you can see that that's going to be equal to h over two. But let's just go back to the limit again. We're, we're limiting h towards zero. Well, if h tends towards zero, then hopefully you're happy that h over two is also going to head towards zero. So we can say the limit of this function is equal to zero. And it's these two things that we're going to use in the proof. OK, so uh, we're going to make a start with uh, the derivative of uh, sine x. So we're going to say y equals sine x. And here I've just got those two results that we found on the previous slide. OK, um, just a quick recap of differentiation from first principles. So we've got the point uh, x f of x and a small increase h uh, and then so therefore this point would be the point x plus h and f of x plus h and the gradient of that line would be the difference between these two so f of x plus h minus f of x all over the small increase h and if we limit that h towards zero then we do actually get the derivative dy by dx. OK, so let's plug in uh, our function, which is sine x, uh, into this formula. So we can say that the derivative of y, dy by dx, is the limit as h tends towards 0 of, and it's f of x plus h, so in, for this function, sine of x plus h minus the function f of x, so minus sine x, and then all over h. So where can we go from there? Well, hopefully 
when you look at a function like this um, and you see this bit, you, you, you might think of the compound angle formulae. This is sine of something plus something. So we can actually expand this by using the compound angle formula. So we're going to get sine x cos h plus cos x sine h. Everything else stays the same. So we're still limiting h to zero. We've got minus x and over h. OK. This looks like uh, a, a complicated function. Um, what we could try and do to simplify it is perhaps see if there's any common factors in the top. So if you look at the first term and the third term, then hopefully you'll see that there's a common factor of sine x. So I'm just going to take that out as a common factor of those two terms. So we've got sine x into cos h, so that's for that term, and then minus 1 for that term there. And then this middle term is just going to stay there as it was, and it's still all over h. From this point, it's, it's perhaps not obvious uh, looking at it in that form um, where we can go next. <clears throat> but remember that I did say that we were going to need these, uh, these uh, rules we found at the top. So what I'm going to do is just uh, write this in a slightly different way. I'm going to split these into two fractions and, and I'm going to take the sine x and the cosine x out the front of each one. So we've got sine x into cos h minus 1 all over h. So that's that bit there. And then we've got the cosine x which I've taken out and then the sine h over h there. So you just make sure, you, I mean pause the video, just make sure you're happy uh, that those two things are the same. And now at this point, we can actually use what we've got at the top. We're limiting h to 0, same as we did up here. And we know that when that's the case, cosine h minus 1 all over h is equal to 0. So this bit here is equal to 0. And that means that this whole term is equal to 0. So <clears throat> this bit is just going to completely disappear. OK. If we look at this one, sine h over h, well, as h tends towards 0, we know that sine over h, uh, sine h over h, sorry, is equal to 1. So this is all equal to just 1 over 1. It's equal to 1. So here we just end up with cos of h, sorry, cos of x. And so we have indeed shown that as we limit h to 0, then this whole function tends towards cosine of x, i.e. the derivative of sine x dy by dx equals cosine of x. OK, so that's the first one. Uh, now let's try a similar thing with cosine x. In fact, even better, uh, you might want to see whether you can just pause the video uh, and have a go yourself. So we're still using differentiation from first principles. Um, and we would start by just plugging in uh, our function cosine x into this. So perhaps pause the video, see if you can uh, get to our answer, which we know has got to be negative sine x. Okay, so hopefully you managed to have a go at that. Um, so here we've got compound angle formula again. So I'm going to replace this with cos x cos h minus sine x sine x sine h. So everything else stays the same. Um, then I can take out a common factor this time of cosine x. So I've got cosine of x into cos h for that one and minus 1 for that one. And then I can take the cos x out and the sine x out and write it as two separate fractions. And I get this function here. <clears throat> and then if I return to these rules that we found earlier, I know that this one equals 0. So all of that term is going to disappear. This one equals 1. So we end up just with minus sine x or negative sine x. Uh, and that's it really for this video. Um, so hopefully you followed that um, and you'll do some more work with it in lessons. OK, thanks.